The outstanding combat performance of the de Havilland DH-98 Mosquito, a wooden bomber produced by the British, astonished Luftwaffe authorities in 1941. The Mosquito was light and quick, easily breaking through German defenses. Hermann Göring was a fan of the Mosquito, a beautiful wooden plane that was cheaper and more efficient than any German plane. The Luftwaffe designed a comparable aircraft so they created their own, even giving it the same name, the Focke-Wulf TA-154 or Mosquito, M-O-S-K-I-T-O. -O. The speed and elegance of the Mosquito made Goring envious of the British plane. Only the French and British fleets were more powerful in Europe in 1939 than the Luftwaffe. The Luftwaffe, on the other hand, was largely equipped to battle weaker Eastern European countries such as Poland and Czechoslovakia. Despite being outnumbered by the Royal Air Force of the United Kingdom and the French Army, the Luftwaffe did not want to engage in full-fledged warfare. Following the Blitzkrieg operations, Britain and France declared war on Germany, causing the Luftwaffe's tactics to change. The French surrendered, but the British counter-attacked and fought on. The Royal Air Force initiated strategic bombing operations in 1940 to damage facilities and disrupt military production. The British intended to terrorize German residents by attacking unimportant cities, lowering morale and pushing Germany to evacuate troops. British Bomber Command launched Operation Millennium in 1942, targeting Kilon, Essen and Bremen. The number of British bombing increased from 100 to 300 to 500 and 1000, causing substantial damage to German towns and hundreds of civilian fatalities. With the twin-engine DH-98 Mosquito multi-role aircraft, the RAF held a substantial edge against Germany during the World War. Due to its wooden build and twin Rolls-Royce Merlin 21 engines, the Mosquito could operate at heights of 8,000 to 9,000 meters, attain speeds of 430 to 600 km per hour and carry a 2,000 kg bomb load. The Mosquito eventually completed low to medium altitude daylight tactic bombing and high altitude night bombing missions. Notably, the bombing of Cologne, when the Mosquito's strength and speed overpowered German defenses. The Luftwaffe established the Nuchjak Night Fighter Wing in 1942, comprising of Junkers Ju-88 and Bf-109 planes. German officers, on the other hand, thought their fleet were insufficient to oppose British troops. At Hartmilch, Minister of Air Armaments met with Luftwaffe leaders in the summer of 1942 to consider developing a German analogous of the British Mosquito. He requested a high-performance airplane composed of homogeneous wood and powered by U-211 engines. The Focke-Wulf company proposed a concept for high-speed twin-engine bomber and night fighter built of 50% wood, 40% steel and 10% other materials in September 1942. The TA-154, formerly known as the Focke-Wulf night fighter, was renamed Mosquito later on. Due to a lack of competent woodworkers in Germany and the basic U-211 engine's inability to exceed the latitude of the British Mosquito, a meeting was organized in 1943 to debate the future of aircraft manufacturing. The first prototype, which had fuselage-mounted horizontal stabilizers, shoulder-mounted wings, a triangle landing gear configuration and an outward composed wing was completed in July. The Mosquito was a German fighter plane intended to limit engine noise and visibility of the flames. On July 1, 1943, pilot Hans Sonder put it through its paces with flame dampers. Despite its low power, it was easier to command than any other fighter. The third iteration was outfitted with the two MK-108 30mm guns and two MG-151 20mm cannons each loaded with 200 and 300 rounds. 
In October 1943, German pilot Hoffmann Theidfurter tested the V-3 but reported that fuselage section broke off when he shot the guns. Due to a scarcity of skilled employees and bonding resin in Germany, the Air Ministry had problems with mosquito bonding materials. The supply of modified Humo 213 engines had been suspended due to mishaps involving malfunctioning landing gears and hydraulic systems. An eighth version of the Mosquito crashed in May 1944, killing the pilot. The Mosquito factory and Goldschmidt business facilities were destroyed by British RAF bombs, causing further more devastation. During the Mosquito pre-production period, over 15 prototypes were built and tested with various settings. Fearing a more powerful fighter, the British uncovered German attempts to recreate their Mosquito aircraft. There were problems such as the MK-108 cannons not being able to carry bigger caliber weapons and a poor plywood glue repair causing wings failure due to delamination. Due to various technological constraints and issues, the government discontinued the Mosquito project in August 1944. By the time the project was abandoned, around 80 mosquitoes had been produced, some of which were left at German airfields or destroyed by Allied bombing operations in 1944. Several part of a night fighter squadron using light blue fuselage as camouflage. The German Air Force, on the other hand, depended on the Messerschmitt Bf 110Gs and Yonkers Ju 88 night fighters to break up Allied bombing formations. After the battle, only one mosquito survived, along with a stack of jet engines ready to be demolished. Mosquitoes were eradicated in eastern Germany prior to the Soviet occupation. One of the unfinished mosquitoes was meant to destroy a formation of bombers. It had a one-of-a-kind mechanism in which the former fuselage was filled with ingenious high explosives as well as small cockpit for the pilot. The pilot would fly the Mosquito into an Allied bombing formation while arming the charges, then bail out swiftly. The bombs would be detonated by a timer wrecking havoc on the American and the British bombers. However, the concept was never realized. The Lofer Technische Museum in Germany houses a copy of the Mosquito V3 forward section while the British Royal Air Force Museum in London houses additional aircraft from the German night fighter squadron.